The death of experienced caver Floyd Collins. A pioneering caver once found himself in the unforgiving labyrinth of Earth. The labyrinth? None other than the Sand Cave of Kentucky. It was 1925, which turned out to be the last calendar year of his life. This is the story of a man's eternal struggle against nature's relentlessness. This is the tragic story of Floyd Collins. Chapter 1. Good Old Days. Born on June 20, 1887 in Kentucky, Floyd Collins was the son of Lee Collins and Martha Jane Burnett. His parents, Lee Collins and Martha Jane Burnett, brought him into a world filled with nature's mysteries. Young Floyd was drawn to these mysteries, particularly those hidden beneath the Earth's surface. As a young boy, Floyd developed love exploring caves. This love led him to find a crystal cave 1917 right beneath his dad's farmland. Floyd turned this cave with its unique stone shapes into a place people could visit. In Floyd's time, owning a cave that people could tour was a big deal and could make a lot of money. Because of this, cave owners often acted sneakily to outdo each other, leading to what was known as the Cave Wars. Sadly, Floyd's crystal cave didn't make much money. It was too far away on Flint Ridge Road, and people had to pass many other caves to get there. They often chose to visit these closer caves instead. From the tender age of six, Floyd Collins had been drawn to the thrill of cave exploration. His hunger for adventure, coupled with his eye for profit, never faded. In 1925, this led him to a fresh challenge, a cave known as Sand Cave. But instead of turning it into a gold mine like he'd planned, Floyd found himself ensnared in its cold, stony grip. This led Floyd to take an alternate route on an exploration trip, which was set to endorse another important cave in the area. The Sand Cave. Chapter 2. Sand Cave. Sand Cave was located on a piece of land owned by a guy named Beasley Doyle. This cave was in a prime spot right next to Cave City Road, so travelers would spot it before reaching other popular caves like Mammoth Cave. Floyd made a deal with Beasley Doyle. He'd explore Sand Cave, and if it was worth showing to folks, they'd split the money it made. It was January 30th of the same year. Floyd went into Sand Cave. All he had was a kerosene lamp, and he quickly realized that this cave was tricky. He had to squeeze through narrow passages, even crawling on his stomach at points. One arm stretched out in front of him, pushing his lamp, the other at his side. After this tight squeeze, the cave started to open up, but his lamp started flicking. As per the Kentucky National Guard, the cave also harbored a grand spectacle underground. A large amphitheater soaring about 80 feet high, located merely 300 feet from the cave's welcoming mouth. Knowing the danger of losing light in a cave, Floyd decided to head back. But as he was moving through the narrow passage again, his foot knocked loose a 27-pound rock, which trapped his ankle. No matter how he tried, he couldn't free his foot. He was stuck, trapped in a stony prison. And this is where Floyd's chilling story in Sand Cave begins. Chapter 3. A Journey to Death A day later, Beasley Doyle's son, Jewel, found out that Floyd was still stuck in the cave. Word of Floyd's dire situation spread like wildfire across Cave City, drawing a crowd to the cave's mouth. Some showed up to lend a hand, while others came to gawk, eager to witness the rescue efforts. In no time, Floyd's predicament became known far beyond Kentucky. Assistants arrived in many forms. Engineers, geologists, fellow cave explorers, and even miners who tried to dig a new tunnel to reach Floyd. Yet, all their attempts fell short. They could reach him, but couldn't free him. As the days rolled on, the spectacle grew. The cave entrance swelled with a sea of people. Hopeful rescuers, curious bystanders, and opportunistic vendors selling refreshments and keepsakes. According to the Kentucky National Guard, the crowd could have numbered up to 50,000. Amidst this throng was a petite reporter from the Louisville Courier-Journal, William Skeets Burke Miller. His nickname, Skeets, referred to his small size, akin to a mosquito. However, it was this diminutive stature that proved advantageous. With his ability to navigate the tight passages of Sand Cave, Miller managed to conduct several heart-rending interviews with Floyd, trapped in desperate. These conversations would later win him a Pulitzer Prize. Miller wrote, according to the Chicago Tribune, My flashlight revealed a face on which is written suffering of many long hours, because Collins has been in agony every conscious moment since he was trapped at 10 o'clock Friday morning. He added, I saw the purple of his lips, the pallor on his face, and realized that something must be done before long, if this man is to live. Tragically, all efforts were in vain. On February 4th, 
a portion of the cave's roof crumbled, isolating Floyd further from those trying to save him. Twelve days later, on February 16th, the rescuers, navigating through a newly dug tunnel, discovered the lifeless body of Floyd Collins. After he was found, there was complete silence from Collins, no breath, no stir, and his eyes had sunk into their sockets. Doctors said this showed extreme tiredness, the kind that comes with not having anything to eat. Due to the extraordinary circumstances, the rescuers decided to leave his body in Sand Cave and abandon the rescue shaft as it was slumping at an alarming rate. They didn't want to risk any more lives. Floyd Collins lost his life while striving to make his cave a hit. In a twist of fate, his death ended up turning the nearby Crystal Cave into a tourist hotspot. Not only that, his story became a legacy. Chapter 4. Legacy Continues Floyd Collins' life and the tragic circumstances of his death seized the nation's focus, transforming the quiet region of south-central Kentucky, home to Mammoth Cave. His tale sparked the creation of books like Trapped by Robert K. Murray and Roger W. Brucker, and The Life and Death of Floyd Collins by Floyd's brother Homer Collins and John L. Lehrberger. It even inspired a musical, Floyd Collins, that toured the world, and the 1951 Hollywood movie Ace in the Hole. Most significantly, Floyd Collins' life and demise spotlighted Kentucky's cave-rich landscape and the need to safeguard it. This ultimately led to the founding of Mammoth Cave National Park in 1941. There's an interesting event relating to his burial and tomb as well. Chapter 5. Posthumous Implications As reported by Atlas Obscura, it took an additional two months to retrieve Floyd Collins' body from Sand Cave. Once extricated, he was buried on his family's farm. Typically, this would mark the end of the tale. Yet in this case, things only grew more bizarre. In 1927, a man named Dr. Harry Thomas bought Crystal Cave and exhumed Floyd Collins' body. He placed Floyd's remains in a glass-covered coffin in the heart of the cave to attract tourists who could gaze upon his remains. Beside it, a tombstone proclaimed, Greatest Cave Explorer Ever Known. But then the story took another odd turn. On September 23, 1927, someone tried and failed to steal Floyd Collins' body. Less than two years later, on March 18, 1929, a thief successfully stole Floyd's remains. Law enforcement managed to track down the thief with the aid of bloodhounds, but somehow, Floyd's body lost a leg during these events. The peculiar saga of Floyd Collins' body finally concluded in 1961 when the National Park Service bought Crystal Cave. Access to Floyd Collins' tomb was restricted, and his body was finally given a proper burial in 1989 at the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church. Gratefully, in the years following, no further attempts have been made to steal Floyd Collins' body the ill-fated explorer can now, at last, rest in peace. With that, it is to sum up today's story. Be sure to subscribe for more blues from the world of adventure and explorations. This video on your screen will take unravel the untold story of Alexander Gukov, a mountaineer almost hunted by the relentlessness of Himalayas. We will catch you there. Goodbye.